This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Use the code ANDREWJAMES to get 10% off your first purchase. What's going on, and crew? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day that we finally break down the Sam Calder creative process infamous transition. So I posted the reaction video last Saturday, and I've had a little bit of time to mess around with this transition, see what I could come up with, and I thought I'd go over it with you guys today. Now, I do want to say, I just want to, um, I just want to warn you guys that this transition that I was able to pull off is nowhere near not even close as good as Sam Colders. So before you guys watch this tutorial, I'm going to show you what I came up with. It's not quite as good as Sam Colders, but the general principles are there. So I'll play that for you guys now. And if you want to learn how I did it, then watch the rest of the video. Alright everybody, so I'm inside of Adobe After Effects now and I've got these two different clips and as always guys I've got these clips available for download if you want to follow along But the first thing we're gonna do is just kind of trim up these clips a little bit So what we're looking for is a clean shot of the sky and then the first frame when it starts to pan down So it's panning up panning up and then right there you can kind of see it it starts to pan down just a bit right there What we're gonna do is go ahead and split this clip We'll drag over this ending clip so it starts at the beginning of that cut and then we'll just go ahead and trim this composition Just like that. We'll go ahead and trim it a bit more just to make it a little bit shorter Now we're gonna go over to this clip right here We'll turn off this clip for now and we're gonna pre-compose it move all attributes into new composition that's okay i always like to trim my pre-comps and then what we're going to do is we're going to track this background now you guys can go ahead and track your background with any method that you want however i did try a couple methods on here and i was struggling with it a bit so i'm just going to track it using mocha pro if you guys don't have mocha pro you can also use mocha ae it ships with every copy of after effects so i went ahead into mocha pro and i tracked this really quickly but once again just track it however you feel comfortable i have a lot of other videos on my channel covering tracking and things like that all right so once you have some kind of track on this footage the next thing we're gonna do is turn back on this layer right here and we're gonna add the luma key effect now I'm going to go and change the key type to key out brighter and the threshold to 193. Now the first thing that you're going to notice is right here on the side, you can see that this wall right here is completely blown out. So we're going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to draw a quick mask around the edges of it. Just something quick and easy like this. Then we'll go up to the Luma key and we'll just delete that layer. And there you go. Now we've got this nice mask. I'm going to take both of these two layers. I'm going to right click and hit pre-compose and I'm going to name this roof. I'll go ahead and hit OK. I'll trim this pre-comp just because I'm OCD. Now we're going to head back into this pre-comp that we made earlier. We'll copy the layer, but now I'm going to paste that footage that we just copied and I'm going to call this layer waves cover. Cool. So now what we're going to do is double click on this waves cover layer. We'll move forward a bit to where we can see the waves. And now we're going to go up to this clone stamp tool right here. We'll select it. My diameter is 161. You don't want it to be too big. And then my hardness is at zero. And now what I'm going to do is click alt on PC, select some of the background. And then I'm just going to start clicking, select alt, click, alt, click. And I'm just going to go down and just cover up all of these waves. Cool. Something just like that. Then we'll head back into the composition. Now I'm going to right click on this clip, go to time and hit freeze frame. Then I'm going to go up to the rectangle tool here and I'm just going to draw a quick rectangle around what we just drew. Now I'll select F on my keyboard that brings up the mask feather and I'm going to feather this by 50%. Then I'm going to head over to this quick whip right here and I'm going to drag it and drop it on the BG track. All right, so after all that, check this out. Now it goes up with the waves and it comes down and we've got this clean slate. So now we can go ahead and turn back on our roof layer. And what we're actually going to do is scale this up to 120. Don't worry, this is shot in 4K, so we don't have to worry about losing any quality. And then we're going to go and we're going to pick whip it to the background track as well. Then we're going to go to the first frame right here. We're going to open up the position on the roof layer, keyframe the position, and we're going to move it way down. Keep moving all the way down until you get it out of the frame, just like that. And then you're gonna go to the end of the clip and move it back up, <laughs> something just like that. And now if we play it through, and then we're gonna take these two keyframes and we're gonna right click on them, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. Cool, so that's pretty much it for the transition. There's a couple things we can do to make this a little bit better. Now, one thing I found over my time doing sky replacements is that it's always best, always best to add two similarities between the individual footage. The sky is constant in both of these shots, but it's nice to add another thing that is constant between both those shots. So we have the sky, and now we wanna add one other thing. In Sam Coulter's video, the second constant throughout both of the clips is the water 
water splash. You can see this water splashing even when we move on to the mountain shot. Now, unfortunately, my footage didn't have any water droplets, so what we're gonna do, add in one of these waves right here. So I'm gonna duplicate this clip, pull up my pen tool, draw a quick mask. I'll do some quick keyframing. I'm gonna take the mask feather and make it a thousand, and then I'm gonna just drag it up and drag it in between the transition. The last thing I'm gonna do is change this to a 3D layer, and I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis by 180 degrees and that just flips it around. All right, cool. So after some color grading and a little bit of a vignette, cause I noticed Sam Coulter had a bit on his footage, I brought it back into Premiere Pro and rendered it through. And this is what the final result looks like. All right, so there you guys have it. It's not quite as clean as Sam Quarter's or anything like that, but I hope this video gives you sort of a general look at how I'd guess Sam Quarter probably pulled off this transition. Now, real quick, guys, I just want to talk a little bit more about Squarespace, and don't worry, I'm not going to drag on too long about this, but I just want to say Squarespace really is an incredible online tool. As filmmakers, photographers, editors, and everything like that, it's so crucial to have a portfolio. If you're trying to get a job in the film industry or film for a travel agency or a concert or anything like that, you're gonna have to have a portfolio. And I actually genuinely do love Squarespace. Before the sponsorship or anything like that, I use Squarespace. I needed a portfolio, but I hate coding. I take a computer science class, but it's the worst. It's so much work to run a server or buy a domain or anything like that, and Squarespace just takes care of everything. I was able to build a dope website. I was able to get the domain that I wanted, and it's really just an all-in-one platform for your online store or website. So I encourage you guys to go to Squarespace and start your free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your site, use this link right here to get 10% off your first purchase. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I post Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so I'll see you guys back here on Fridays. Be sure to get outside, film a video, make a difference, and I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace.